As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. What does that mean? With everything going on in our world lately, and, and certainly in the past few days and weeks, and, and even this year as a whole, it seems like a lot of sparks have been flying. And if your world's anything like mine, everywhere you go, you feel like you've seen and heard just about everything. And what's so interesting, at least from what I've seen, which I'm happy to be wrong about, is that in the blink of an eye on any given day, any one of us can go from having this casual, cordial conversation with friends in one minute to engaging in a heated and passionate discussion or even a debate about things you deeply care about and believe in the next minute. Then throw in a pandemic, cultural issues, and hot button social topics, mix it all up, shake it all together, and then pour it out onto every online platform that we have access to. And what you end up with is one really interesting recipe. And the beauty and wonder of it all is that whether it's a recipe for disaster or a recipe for discourse is completely up to you and me. And that's what I want to talk about today from my, one of my favorite passages of scripture. So stick around, especially to the end, because I want to share a thought that most people don't talk about when talking about this verse. Hey, it's Adam Simon. Welcome to Responding to the Call, where every week we talk about faith, family, and finances from a biblical perspective. If you're new here or you haven't yet, consider subscribing and clicking that notification bell so that you never miss new content like this. All right, let's jump into it. Proverbs 27, 17 says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Now there's a reason why I can boldly say that this is one of my favorite passages in all of scripture because it shows the way that two completely different people can be used to challenge, strengthen, and sharpen each other. And when you think about it, the imagery that he uses here isn't some earth shattering concept because we've all seen this before. Maybe not with iron or steel, but with something as simple as the knives in our own kitchen cabinets. So the author of this proverb uses a brilliantly simple down to earth concept to share a really powerful theological and relational truth. Iron sharpening iron is a process of being honed, refined, and sharpened so that the tool or the person in this case can do and become what it was created and designed to be. And he's highlighting and underlining the mutual benefit of rubbing two blades together because as you do, the edges get sharper, the knife or the tool that you're working with gets more efficient, better equipped to cut and slice. And what's really interesting is that most of this process happens at the microscopic level. As these little tiny dull metal edges are being bent and forced back into razor sharp design and the same thing happens with us at the heart level, whether we're the one doing the sharpening or we're the one being sharpened. And even though that sounds really good, when you think of sharpening something or sharpening someone, it's not this nice flowery easy process where you just kind of say encouraging things to someone as a cheerleader or just tell them what they want to hear. Because if you really watch this process happen, iron sharpening iron is rough. And if you're doing it right, there's going to be heat and there's going to be friction involved. Think of a steel worker or a blacksmith or an iron worker sharpening a sword or an axe head. Sometimes there's even hammers that need to be used to beat on the steel or that piece of iron in order to craft and design it into what it was meant to be. And for this entire process to work the way that God's designed it, there has to be friction, sparks, metal on metal that forges that tool and makes sure that, that whatever's being crafted on the other end is going to turn out the way that God, its designer, intended it to turn out out. And what you have at the end, when it is sharpened, is a tool or a weapon in the hand of a warrior that's been perfectly crafted, ready to be used, and ready to be put into service. It's been through some stuff. It's been forged through heat and, and maybe some trials and maybe some testing. And using the imagery here, it's had people in their life encouraging them to challenge them and sometimes to push back on them by, by being willing to say that the things that are hard to say because they love them and they're willing to say it. And because they know the explosive potential you have and what you've been created by God to do in this world. And if you're the one doing the sharpening, you'd be willing to do the exact same thing for that friend in your life. And the tough part about all of this is that it takes hard work. It takes uncomfortable work because it takes being close with somebody and letting somebody else in, which means both people in this relationship are going to have to be vulnerable at some point, vulnerable enough to tell each other the truth, even if it hurts. But the difference is that when it comes from the mouth of someone you trust implicitly and that you know always has your back, even though it stings and even though you might not want to hear it or disagree with it at the time, you know that what's being said is being said out of love, encouragement, and with your best interest in mind. And you would do the exact same for them a hundred times out of a hundred. Proverbs 27, five and six says this. It says, better is an open rebuke than hidden love. And faithful are the wounds of a friend. Which is so interesting, right? Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Which basically means that you can truly trust someone who's willing to take a massive risk by wounding you with the truth in order to be honest. Because only a friend who wants to encourage and sharpen you would be willing to say words like that. Words that we need to hear and, and might be painful to hear, but we know we need to hear them. One author said it best, he said it this way. He said, you can be careful and just shut up, or you can be candid and not really care. But to be a friend takes being careful and candid 
and being willing to go through some pain. That's what makes it so hard to be a friend because true friendship, deep friendship takes two really important things, vulnerability and accountability. Okay, so a couple of questions as we live this one out. Who do you have in your life like that? Think about it. Who do you have that's willing to do the hard work and maybe the heart work of sharpening you? Think of three people in your life that come to mind. And if you can't think of three, pick one. Because regardless of who it is and how many it is, I want you to do something right now. Take out your phone and shoot them a text and just thank them for being someone in your life who you can be real with and who's real with you. Let them know that God's using them in your life and that they're a blessing because you have no idea how far one simple text can go and how encouraging it could be for them to know that they're being used by God in someone else's life. You never know. They might need that right now. So send it. Tell them you're grateful for them. And then thank God for their friendship. And by the way, take a minute to pray for them too. And just set up a time to get together this week or just for coffee or whatever. And by doing that, we're not just sharpening each other, but we're living out what Hebrews chapter 10 verses 24 and 25 say to do. It says, and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together like some have done, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. He says to consider how to stir each other up to love and good works. Because it takes thinking about the other person. It takes thought. It takes intentionality. It takes knowing how and when that person needs encouragement and what they need to hear when they need to hear it. And the way it's worded is that it goes both ways, which proves that relationships and iron sharpening iron is not a one-way street. I mean, we need this now more than ever, and I love it because it's anything but passive friendship. The point is that at some level, we all need close relationships with people, people that we trust, people we've given permission to help us with the blind spots in our lives and who are willing to encourage courage and and recognize some of the weakest areas that we have. People we can be accountable and vulnerable with. That's true for both men and women. It doesn't have to be every friendship we have. Maybe it's only with one or two people at the most. That might be all you can handle at that depth and that level for now. And that's perfect. All I'm asking is that you recognize that the person or the people in your life that God surrounded you with to sharpen you and strengthen you are an absolute gift and that you've been given to them to be the exact same. Oh, and here's a little bonus thought that might help sharpen you too. How about getting around some people that don't agree with you on everything? People who don't believe what you believe or feel the way you do about certain things and certain issues. And honestly, that should be really easy right about now. Because notice that it doesn't say what kind of person sharpens another. It doesn't say that as iron sharpens iron, so does one person that agrees with everything you say sharpen another. No, it just says as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. So let the sparks fly. Let someone challenge your thinking on some things and then reciprocate and and ask them questions and challenge them on some things. Because when's the last time you asked someone their opinion or what they believe just to hear them out and just to listen to why they feel that way or why they believe what they believe? And who knows? These might turn into the, the conversations that you look forward to most. These might turn into your favorite relationships and you might even learn something. And by the way, the same rules still apply because when you do it out of mutual respect and love for that other person, that's when true sharpening happens. So just remember this, if a knife or a tool is dull, it doesn't stop being what it is. It just becomes less effective and less useful. But on the other hand, a perfectly sharp knife and a perfectly crafted tool in the hands of somebody who needs it is a beautiful thing. Or as far as your life goes, in the hands of a God who wants to use it. So get around some people who are willing to sharpen you, to encourage you, to build you up. People who aren't afraid to be real with you or tell you the truth, even if it hurts, even if it causes sparks. Because those are the exact people that God's blessed you with to shape and sharpen you in ways you never thought possible. So send that text and make that call or write that email. Do whatever you need to do to reach out to the people in your life who are sharpening you. So hey, I appreciate you watching today. If you found this video helpful, you got value out of it, do me a favor, give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more videos like this or you have an idea of any other videos you want me to create, leave a comment, let me know. I'll add it to my list of videos to make. So thanks again for watching. God bless you guys. Keep seeking Christ first in your life and I'll see you in the next video. 